Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I'm running late again because I seem to always be doing that when I have lots of stuff to do. Um, I have a plugin. It's maybe not the most exciting plugin, but I have a pile of other things going on as well, including a Air Windows post that is not about being a plugin. Um, also, uh, another thing. Check this out. Boop, 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 boop. I have been enhancing sort of my video stuff and learning more about how to do that properly with the intentions of getting back into doing my music th streaming thing. So that's going to be starting off for anybody who's interested. It'll be on this huge YouTube channel. And if you'd like to tune in, that's fine. But if not, let's first talk about the plugin because that's what people are most interested in most of the time. So, but. The plugin this week is Tape Dither. And Tape Dither is, and I should point out, I have two separate projects that are more exciting than yet another Dither. It's just that they both have expanded in doing them, much like the uh, Capacitor 2. I have, um, actually, no, that's not two projects, that's three projects. <laughs> um, I have stuff in the works that is expanding outwards and getting bigger and awesomer and cooler to the extent that it wasn't ready. So uh, if you want to talk to me about that on the Monday question and answer session, there are fun new things that I can bring to the Q&A session as well. But for now, let's talk about this one plugin. It is Tape Dither. And what we have here is the regular dither to 24 or 16 bit, but it's also a TPDF. And the thing I should point out is that uh, tape dither is a TPDF dither. Now I'm running at 96k and downsampling to make a video, so uh, tape dither scales itself as you go. So it's not producing exactly the same sound that it would at 44.1k. It's acting more like it is literally a tape stock. So when you run it this fast, what you get is a soothing kind of noise floor. And that's not very different from TPDF because it is literally TPDF. It's just TPDF with a different style of um, Rather than generating two random sources, or like Paul Dither, which is also coming out at some point, um, doing uh, the random source and then subtracting, Tape Dither does a random source and then delays it slightly and does it again. So what it'll give you is a shaped sort of tone out of the background noise. And it's not exactly the same tone, as TPDF. As you can hear, even at this higher speed, it's got a sort of hissy, fuzzy quality to it that's not exactly the same as just raw noise, but of course it is simply just raw noise because it is a fully functional TPDF dither that is just as legitimate for like fussy dither use where you want to have done it exactly correctly as any other TPDF dither would be. So there you have it. Tape Dither is like any of my other Dithers um, or any of my other plugins, uh, free and open source, and the whole thing is supported by Patreon. But you know, that's not the only thing that gets supported by Patreon. And I'm not talking just the synthesizers that I learn about and can tell you more about in future, or the studio that I work in. I've also got researches. And here is the most recent one. By the time you see this video, I will have made a um, post to wearwindows.com that uh, explains what this page is. And the post is essentially just a large text post, but this page you will find 
as a image. It is just a JPEG. This is printed onto a piece of paper from literally just a JPEG. And the JPEG is in the size of a uh, HD screen, much like a lot of cell phones and things. So if you have this on your phone, in theory, you should be able to open it up and see all of this and read the larger numbers anyhow. What is this? People who have been going to my um, question and answer sessions will recognize it. I've been doing some research on tempo and identifying, you might call them zones, where given tempos produce a kind of flavor, a kind of feel that's consistent and it recurs. I, I call them nodes. It's like as the tempo increases, it cycles through these nodes and one node is a sort of serene, smooth flow where everything feels just effortless and, and uh, smooth. And the opposite side of that node is a node where everything is kind of intense and edgy and everything feels more dramatic. And then if you increase halfway from the smooth, serene flow, you get into a lively sort of groove zone. It's not too edgy, but it's just full of life and energy. And if you slow down halfway from this serene, smooth zone, you get into this sort of swaggering area. And I discovered this by trying to analyze lots of different songs, lots of different classic, great, good rock songs and hit songs of all kinds. I mean, we're talking all the way to things like the Monty Python, Python theme and Singing in the Rain. And uh, there was a surprising consistency across all these different tempos. Like I could show you again, what we've got here is not just a single tempo that says this is the serene tempo. You know, like 120 beats per minute is the serene because it's the heartbeat. No, no, no. The moods seem to cycle through in an algorithm that I kind of discovered. And then one of my Air Windows fans, Bowdoin Arias, has been helping me refine this further and experimenting further with it. And we came up with this. If you download the image that this is or look at the uh, Air Windows post, it's going to be in the non-plugins category, which is not very uh, common. But uh, I have more and more stuff falling into that category. So it's, it's just other stuff that uh, I get to put out there into the world. You'll see that we have these large numbers for types of tempo. And underneath them is a smaller number with a decimal point that is the exact tempo that that node converges on to three decimal places. So rather than the uh, one of the key groove things being 118 beats per minute, you would instead be looking at 117.524 beats per minute if you wanted to really narrow down like optimized groove for that particular tempo family. Or if you wanted to go really serene and you're going like, okay, 100 beats per minute is a uh, chilled out down tempo kind of thing, but wait, can we go farther? And you'd see on the image that you can do 99 beats per minute, but wait, can we go farther than that? If this theory holds up, you can go to 98.644 beats per minute and narrow down the sort of optimal flow state of that particular tempo to a ridiculous and excessive. But then this is the person who does 24 bit dithers. So, you know, I like pursuing this kind of stuff to beyond all reason. And here's the thing. You don't have to get into this or like it or believe in any of it at all. If you look at the list of songs that I put together, I came up with songs across all these different tempos that seem to have these qualities in common. That the ones that were serene, they might be more up-tempo, but they didn't feel as if they were rushing. They felt as if they were just chill and locked into a perfect trance-like zone. And indeed, there are tempos like 130 beats per minute, which is typical for trance and is also a serene flow state. Or if you go really fast, 
140 beats per minute is almost perfectly maximum intense and edgy, but then if you go faster to 150 beats per minute, you're back to the serene flow again. And I think some electronic music composers will click with some of this stuff and go, oh, wait a minute, yeah, that's making a kind of sense. That's talking a language. Because some of it dials in on, like, increments of 10, like 130, 140, 150, 160, alternate between serene and intense and edgy to the point of almost unbearable. Like 140 and 160 are both optimal intense and edgy and too muchness. But then if you dial it all the way back to like 92, you can get a very slow down tempo feel that is still intense and full of energy. So this is one of the things that has kept me real busy in recent weeks. Basically the way all of this works is I'm doing my plugins. I've got more of them coming. I don't have to just only do dithers. Just this week happens to have been one that was very busy for a variety of reasons. If you want to ask me how that went uh, on the Monday Q&A, I'm more than happy to make some time to explain any of it. But um, there's also a pile of other stuff. And it can be personal, like me wanting to get back into doing music again. Or it can be me digging into my fancy video editing things and learning how to do that better so that I can apply it to both the stuff that I do. And uh, I'd like to believe that if I can do things like soldering up uh, circuitry as part of Air Windows to show people how to do that, well, being able to put in a camera that zooms right in on where I'm soldering stuff will be handy. So that's a necessary that's a necessary prerequisite for doing that and bit by bit I'm getting all the pieces in place but yeah in these unmanageable times where stuff is really difficult and awkward I like to be able to try to come up with these things wherever they show up and follow through with them like, I didn't have to do this, and maybe it won't make any sense to you. If it does prove interesting, if you go, hey, I want to do a song, and this song that I'm doing needs to have maximum swagger and attitude, how do I go about that? And I can tell you, yeah, well, you can do swagger and attitude, but maybe you don't want to do like 120 beats per minute. Maybe if you pulled it back to 110 beats per minute, all of a sudden it would start feeling like you had lots more attitude. Or if you needed to go faster, you could go to 126. Well, technically, 125.993 if you want to get really particular about it. Or go even faster to 145. 166. All about the attitude. And then if you wanted to ramp it up so that you went from your swagger attitude thing to a outro that uh, seemed to levitate into a space where everything was just smooth and sailing. You could go from 166 and automate a change in tempo to 171.354, and that should work. I think it would actually work. So yeah, that's another post on airwindows.com. I will link to it. I will link to the image in my posts on forums and stuff. And uh, I will see some of you folks on the Q&A session that I do. And for the time being, as I keep wrestling all of these cameras and things into submission and figuring out how I can get my uh, music streaming thing back up and rolling, if all goes well, I can at least try to roll it on Tuesday and you would not believe the amount of stuff I have been fixing up between the time that I stopped and the time that I resumed. I really had to do a lot of woodshedding and figure out some new stuff, and I feel that it will work out nicely. And then hopefully, if it does work out nicely, I'll be able to explain what I did, because that's kind of most of what I'm about. It's not about people going, oh, you're wonderful guitar playing, oh, you're great, you know, space house music, yay. It's, I want to do these things, have them be awesome, and I can tell if they're awesome because people want to listen to them which is a hard sell. It's hard to get anybody to listen to anything these days. 
But then what's really in it for me is having discovered something that really works. I like sharing it. I like explaining it. And that's what Erwin is just all about. So on that note, I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.